mamas, breastfeeding comes with so many benefits, joys, and a deep connection between you and your baby, but sometimes it also comes with challenges, discomforts, and doubts. Being supported through the breastfeeding journey is so crucial, but so many mamas feel like they aren't getting the support that they need in some of their most challenging times. In this video, we are covering nipple blisters and how to prevent them, as well as how to treat them so that if you are facing that challenge now, you get your questions answered, or if it's something you face in the future, you'll be equipped and empowered to know what to do. I'm Bridget and I'm a childbirth educator and birth doula and it's my goal and hope that every mama who encounters these educational videos walks away believing that they are built to birth. If you're new to this channel and want to stay in the loop each time an informative and educational video comes out, make sure you subscribe and hit the little bell on the side so you don't miss any future videos. Most women experience some kind of bump in the road when it comes to breastfeeding, some more than others. I know it's hard to see it now, but when the road finally gets smoother and more straightforward, I truly believe you will be so grateful and empowered by overcoming every obstacle in your way to experience the joy and connection of nursing your little one. By the end of this video, you're going to be given information and tools to help make your breastfeeding journey a little smoother and straightforward. So what is a nipple blister, which is also called a bleb? So a blub occurs when a little bit of skin overgrows a pore on the nipple, blocking the duct and causing milk or other fluid to get trapped in the pore. And it's usually painful, usually at the blister site, or it can sometimes be felt further behind the breast as well. It usually looks like a little white, sometimes flesh colored, even yellowish raised bump on the nipple. If the raised bump looks like a darker red or brownish color, it's likely that it's a blood blister and not actually a milk blister that's being caused by a poor latch where your nipple is rubbing on part of your baby's mouth or is being sucked in such a way that it's causing rubbing that has resulted in a blood blister. If you're having a tough time with latch with your baby, I recommend watching this video that I'm linking up here that has helped so many mamas achieve an easier, more comfortable latch. Now, milk blisters will generally resolve themselves, but can be really painful, especially while you're nursing. So it's something that you want to address as quickly as possible. So let's talk about what you can do at home to resolve the issue as quickly as possible. And the first way to remove a blub is by soaking your breast in a saline solution in a bowl. So I personally love and recommend using Epsom salt because of its healing properties and it is so versatile. It's great to add to baths for muscle aches. It's perfect for sits baths to help with postpartum healing and amazing for breastfeeding remedies. So I'll link down below Epsom salts for you that you can get to keep at home for when you need it. So all you'll do is add one tablespoon of Epsom salt into a bowl of one cup of hot water. Now you don't want the water so hot that you're going to burn yourself obviously, but about the same temperature that you would take a bath in. If you don't have Epsom salt on hand and you're trying to make the solution right now, a tablespoon of any salt that you have on hand will be fine to use in the one cup of bath temperature water. Now, if you have a really big bowl and you need to fill it up with more water than just one cup, then it's about one tablespoon of salt, Epsom salt, or whatever kind of salt you have to one cup of water. So if you need more water, two cups, then two tablespoons of salt. So once you combine the salt and the water, it's going to dissolve pretty quickly in the warm water. So once you've made the solution, you're going to place your breast primarily where the blister is into the solution for about five minutes. So it's kind of good if you have it on a table or a flat surface so that you can kind of just lean over it and place your breast in the solution. So like I said, you'll do that for about five minutes, but you can also do this with a Hakka silicone breast pump, which I 100% recommend every breastfeeding mama to own, and I will link it down below. So this is the Hakka silicone breast pump, and this is great for starting a milk stash at the beginning. This is used by some women instead of a pump, and it's amazing for clogged ducts and blebs too. I talk about how to use this for mastitis or clogged ducts in this video that I'm linking up here, and the same applies for the bleb as well. So you'll fill it with hot water just like you would with a bowl and a tablespoon of Epsom salt, just enough so that your bleb will be in the solution when you suction it to your breast. And then sometimes you'll actually be able to see the bleb 
release into the haka while you're doing this. Now for some mamas, this will be too uncomfortable to use the haka if it's too much suction on the blister, but whether you use a bowl or the haka, what the saline solution soak is going to do is dry up the skin that has grown over that pore so that it will flake off on its own. You do not want to poke, pick, or try to puncture the blister because that can lead to infection and that is going to lead to bigger issues that will make the road even bumpier. So after you've soaked the blood for about five minutes, you'll take a clean washcloth, the softest one that you have, and you're going to run warm water over it, squeeze it out, and then gently rub it over the blister in a circular motion. And with that, we're hoping that the skin that's dried up and pulled away from the pore can now easily be removed. A lot of times this will do the trick and you'll notice a stringy white strand of milk that actually comes out of the duct where the blocked pore was. And if that's the case, you can pull it out with nice clean hands or you'll notice that the white blister is gone and you'll start feeling relief. Now, if that doesn't work, the next thing that you can do is grab some olive oil and a cotton ball. Olive oil is really the best oil that you can use because it's liquid at room temperature and it doesn't absorb into the skin super quickly, which you'll want with this at-home remedy. So with the cotton ball, you are going to dip it into a bit of olive oil. You don't need to saturate the whole cotton ball. One side is plenty. And then what you'll do is place the oil side on your bleb and let it soak for about 15 to 30 minutes. Now, because it's oil, it's probably going to seep onto whatever clothes you're wearing. So make sure it's a bra or a t-shirt that you don't really care about, or you can use a cotton breast pad or disposable ones, both of which I will link down in the descriptions below that you can put between the cotton ball and your bra. So once you've let that sit on there for 15 to 30 minutes, you'll remove the cotton ball and then you'll take your warm washcloth and then just Gently rub that bleb to remove that skin that's become super soft now and ready to come off. Now, if that's still not doing the trick, you can repeat the saline solution and the cotton ball with the olive oil as many times as you want, but if it doesn't seem to be working for you in a day or two, you definitely want to reach out to your care provider so that they can help remove it. Usually the bleb will resolve itself in a few days, and if you're doing these at-home remedies, it'll likely resolve faster, but if it comes to needing your care provider's assistance, usually all they will do is puncture the blister and then let it drain. The reason why you want to let them do that is because the tools that they will be using will be sanitary and you want to make sure that you are keeping your breast tissue as clean and healthy as possible all the time, but especially while breastfeeding. When the blister has been released, you want to nurse or pump as soon as you can to help draw out any of the milk that was stuck in that duct because of the clogged pore. So make sure you rinse off your breast and get off that salty taste from the saline solution or the olive oil from the cotton ball so that, so that your baby isn't getting those flavors that they may not love. And that is the case whether you've been able to release the blister or not. Always cleanse your breast off before nursing your baby if you've been using these at-home remedies. Now, if blisters seem to be a common occurrence, it might be worth applying lanolin over the nipple to keep the skin nice and soft. And then once a day, using that washcloth to rub the nipple gently to prevent skin from going, growing over the pores. You want to be doing this super gently and if your nipples are becoming raw from the washcloth or the cloth makes it more painful, then stop and simply pat the area dry instead. To prevent future blebs, your diet has a lot to do with how your body functions. So if you're eating a lot of processed or fast foods that are high in saturated fats, that could be a reason for recurring blisters. So having a balanced diet is going to be so beneficial for your overall health as well as impact your breastfeeding journey. Not all saturated fats are bad like coconut oil and red meat, but the ones found in a lot of the processed foods aren't great for your body, especially when it comes to the consistency of your breast milk. So to keep your breast milk thinner and more free flowing, you can also use sunflower lecithin, which doesn't increase, decrease, or change the quality of your milk supply, but just helps it come out more flowy. So again, I'll link down below my favorite sunflower lecithin 
the Thin Supplement brand. And then lastly, another great way to keep your nipples healthy is by expressing a few drops of breast milk after a feed and then patting it around the nipple with a clean hand and the areola as well and then letting it air dry. Obviously, you're not going to be able to do this all the time, especially when you're out in public, but if you can do this a couple of times a day, breast milk has so many healing properties in it that it can really help keep yourself healthy as well as your baby. So mama, those are my nipple blister or milk blood solutions for you to help make your breastfeeding journey smoother and more enjoyable. If you're struggling with a blood right now, I think these remedies are going to be super helpful. And if you're not a breastfeeding mama quite yet, you now have an extra set of tools to help you navigate that journey once you embark on it. Don't forget to check out the products down below. I believe they're going to be so helpful for you as a breastfeeding mama. So thanks for being with me in this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye mamas.